all those who give leadership in our convention and tonight to you and to yours. God bless you. Um, I stand tonight to make an appeal because we know that when Pastor Butler gets finished preaching after serving 11 years in this same spot that once he's finished preaching are y'all, is this mic on? Once he gets finished preaching there are some that will make their exodus out the door. But we want to make sure tonight that we are um, being a blessing to this late night service. Amen. So I'm going to ask tonight a uh, very, very simple request. If you don't have it, you're the safest place in the person in the room. We want to ask everybody that can give an offering of $20. $20. Amen. We have our giving uh, platforms that are able to give, but if you have that $20, I'm going to ask our ushers to come. I'm going to ask our ushers to come. We want to make sure that we are blessing to this late night service. I'm going to give through our app. No, matter of fact, what's your cash app? KB Ministries. MIA. Amen. Amen. Dollar sign KB Ministries MIA. Amen. But we're going to ask tonight that we give tonight now so that we don't miss it going out the door. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask that you give an offer of at least $20 tonight. Amen? And if you don't have it, give $19.99. Amen? Amen. We want to be a blessing to this great man of God tonight. And we want to make sure we're supporting this late night church service. Can we give God praise for the presence of our president? And First Lady Johnson, amen, amen. Shall we pray? God, we thank you for what is about to transpire in this place. Bless this offering and make it a blessing to this late night experience. It's in Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Going to ask our ushers to give some clarity. Good evening. Can everybody please stand, face the walls, and we're going to start from the back to the front. Please follow the directions of our ushers. Thank you. You can also give electronically by going to the website www.fgbci.org. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is, come on, everybody, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worth. He is good. Yes, he. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is. Worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is good. Yes, he is good, 
for he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Come on, clap your hands. Give God praise in this place. We come tonight to introduce this man of God who's going to preach tonight. He is no stranger to this convention. He is a man and he can speak for himself. He is the uh, eminent efficient pastor of the Mount Olive. You know I know. I'm born and raised in Tampa Bay, all right? Yes, sir. Mount Olive Baptist Church of Tampa, Florida. Tampa Bay where the Bucks play. Y'all ain't playing with us. I'm straight out of Port Tampa, South of Gandy, baby. Amen. I remember as a little boy, just to give a short tip bit, I remember as a little boy, um, when we first moved to Florida from Columbus, Ohio, the first watch night we went to, I walked in to uh, the church that night, and there was a man who was short in stature. But man, he was tearing the place up. And I ain't never seen a preacher preach like that. Dr. C.P. Epps. Oh, my God. So we thank God tonight that following in that same vein that God has called Pastor Butler, my friend and my brother. So after we would have heard one more selection, the next voice you will hear is actually our late night chairman of the Florida General Baptist Convention, Pastor Keith Butler. Hear ye him tonight as we give God praise for him. Amen. Testing one, two, testing one, two. All right. <laughs> if you were asleep, now you're awake. We give God all the glory. We give God all the praise. How many of you came in for a praise? I know many of you have already been fed and you've probably... Oh, wonderful. I know many of you have eaten and you're full and you come here tonight. We come here to praise the Lord. Now, we've been on this road for about an hour or so. We came to praise the Lord. We ask you to get on up and join us as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Oh, I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me oh blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you jesus for oh, blessing me, come on and help me praise it. I just want to praise, praise forever, forever, ever and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, for all you've done for me. Oh, blessings and glory. And honor. and honor, they all, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I know all y'all know this song. Y'all come on and help us. Oh, I just want to praise you forever. Forever. Ever and ever. 
and ever for all you've done for me. Me. Oh, I just want to pray forever, ever and ever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. They all, they all be heaven, blessings and glory. They all, they all, they all, they all heaven, blessings and glory. My life, my strength, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Can we give them another hand? Amen. Lord, we thank you now for what you have done and what you are about to do. For we are fully aware of tonight's time as well as all of our activities that we have experienced all day today. And God, I know you have used so many preachers all week long and today. But I'm asking that you would give us grace today. I pray you would dip us today. Help us now to give a word that's fresh, a revelation that's revealing, and most importantly, God, that you will allow us to leave here better than we came. I thank you for the Mount Olive family that traveled all the way from Orlando to be with their pastor today. I thank you for all those who stayed over tonight. I pray, God, that you allow this service to be a special blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. And all those that love the Lord said amen and amen. Uh, let me once again publicly thank God for amen, the Mount Olive family. Would you just wave your hand, Mount Olive? Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. As you all can see they're all over the building. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're grateful uh, for their presence today. And then, of course, to all of my brothers and sisters of the convention. And we thank you so much for staying over uh, uh, tonight. And I want to thank my brother and my friend, Pastor Dr. Edwards, who is, uh, amen, one of God's gifts in the kingdom. Amen. Our sec general secretary and our president who came, and we definitely understand, amen, his long, lengthy day. When some of us can stay in the room, he got to come out, amen, and be in every service. But we're, we're, we're grateful. I'm not going to hold you long tonight. There is a word found in Psalms 1, um, verse number 3. Psalms 1, verse number 3. And, um, and that's the only verse I'm going to read, amen, uh, to build this text off of. Psalms 1, verse number 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. I, 
Uh, amen. I, I, I want to talk a little bit tonight from the subject, something about that tree. Something about that tree. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is something about that tree. I am very simple in my sermonic presentations. Even when I teach lessons, I have a Socratic way of coming up with how after every message and every lesson, you're going to know the who, what, when, where, and why of the text. I've, my methodology is always approach the text or lesson from a psychological, physiological, theological, and spiritual perspective. That is, has been my bona fide method for well over 30 years of preaching. And it has helped me in so many ways by causing revelation to come forth and to see things that sometimes you normally don't see. Um, I don't like, I don't read into the text. I don't add to the text. However, you can grab things from a text by not just what you read on paper, but, but what the writer was trying to say but did not say. And I liked how this particular writer talks about us believers being as a tree. Let the church say tree. Now, I, I know we all have either heard this preached or taught it or preached it ourselves or taught it. But I, I, I want to tell you, before I can talk about this, what I choose to call the blessed tree, I, I, I can't deal with the blessed tree unless I first deal with the original tree and the cursed tree. Let, let me say that again. I, 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 I know that this text deals with the blessed tree because it talks about the blessed man. However, I can't get to the blessed tree until I first talk about the original tree and the cursed tree. The original tree is found in the book of Genesis chapter number two when, when God explained and expressed his concern about Adam's eating habits. And he said, you can eat of every herb uh, uh, in this garden. You can eat of every tree in this garden, except for two trees. That, that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. He says, you cannot eat of those, of those two trees. It is amazing how uh, what we can't do seems like the most enticing thing to do. It seems crazy that what people tell us we can't do, we, we work hard to prove them wrong and to do. However, this was never a challenge to Adam. This was a command to Adam. Don't touch, don't eat, don't even look at this tree wrong. It, 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 it doesn't belong to you, but everything else belongs to you. Now, now, now I need to say this because uh, uh, we, we are guilty of this. Maybe it's a part of the fallen nature that we have. Uh, uh, we, we always look at what we don't have and try to compare it to what we do have. And we never, ever, ever look at what we do have and be grateful enough to not desire what we don't have. Now, don't ask me to say that again because it ain't going to come out right the next time. The, 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 you, you know how you do. You, when, when you got an event, you, you say to yourself, you don't have nothing to wear. But you got a closet full of clothes. Do, do I have a witness in the house? We, 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 we like to go after what we shouldn't be going after. However, 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 that was the beginning. That was the substratum of, of the problem that man faced. Because once Adam ate of that tree, he unlocked what is called a curse. He unlocked the sting of death. Now, death and curse and, and, and grave and all that stuff was always here, but it had no power. 
It, it, it was death was here. Death was already here uh, 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 even prior to Adam. But but because Adam sinned, yeah. it it gave death power to kill yeah. and, and it gave curse uh, the power to curse others. And so therefore, that leads me to my second tree. Right. That, that that tree is the curse tree. Yeah. That, that tree can be found, my brothers and sisters, in Deuteronomy chapter number 21 and verse number 22 and 23. And it talks about how if somebody sin or, or get convicted of a crime, that they will be hung on a tree. And that tree will be declared cursed because it is holding a, a criminal or someone that has, watch this, the nature or proclivities of sin. And so if you touch it, you'll be cursed. If you touch those that are on it, you'll be cursed. And so it became a tree that was unwanted and regulated, watch this, to the ungodly. The, the, the ungodly was considered cursed because they, they, they were full of sin. Now, 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 for that to be relevant in the text, in, in, in this message, uh, 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 I have to look at uh, the, the original tree to determine what happened. But then I got to look at the cursed tree to tell me what will happen. And then I have to make a decision on whether I'm going to settle with being a part of the curse tree or is there another tree that gives me an out to the curse tree and it is what we find in Psalms 1, a blessed tree. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and I, I don't know, I don't know what tree you hanging under. But, but, but I, I, I'm going to propose tonight that, that you get from under the curse tree and hang under the blessed tree. Now can't nobody in here point fingers at nobody because all of us got the nature to hang under. Oh yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, now I didn't say to hang on the tree, but we sure enough hanging under the tree. <laughs> look, look at your neighbor and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, 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 now here's what I like about uh, Psalms 1. Psalms 1 gives us the proclivities of those who hang under the cursed tree. And if their ways are not changed, they might end up hanging on the cursed tree. Now, now let me show it to you in the text. In Psalms 1, verse number 1, blessed is the man, watch this, uh, uh, that, that, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, now I want you to see it, it was very, it was very uh, specific that the blessed man does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor does a blessed man stand. <laughs> uh huh. Y'all yeah, know it, right? Yeah, yeah. Stand, st yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a blessed man, uh huh. Uh, 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 don't walk. Don't stand, does not even sit. Okay. Now, I need you to understand this because if you're going to ever get under the blessed tree and get from under the cursed tree, you got to understand that it's in our nature to want to walk with ungodly people. Now, 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 the word blessed here in the Hebrew literally means uh, uh uh, um, it means uh, happiness. It, 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 it means it means goodness. Now, now here's what ungodly people can do. Ungodly people will never make you happy, but I will admit they can make it fun. Uh -huh. uh, okay, okay, okay. C come here, come here, come here, come here. I I I know we're in a church setting. And around a whole lot of Baptist folk. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Some of my greatest fun in life wasn't with no deacon or preacher or church folk. It was with some ungodly folk. But here's the problem with the ungodly people. Because of my nature, if I start listening to them, 
I'm going to start doing what, uh, 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 I, I know you don't want to admit it. I, the, the word walking means to progress in. If, if I progress in listening to the counsel of, of, of the ungodly, I'll start doing what. I, now, mama said, birds of a feather. Y'all got the same mama I got. Uh, flock together. Now, 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 so, 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 now, now, here's the danger. Now, here's the danger. If you walk long enough, you'll start standing with. Mm. Now, 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 one of the great things about uh, Scripture that I love, uh, um, especially when it comes down to God, um, th th there is, uh, uh, th th there is uh, how can I put it? Um, so, the Bible says that Jesus sits on the right hand side of, of, of the Father. The, the word sitting here means uh, uh, it, he literally belongs there, at, at, not as a servant, because a servant stands, not as a slave. Because a slave bow, yeah. but as it, but when you sit, you're sitting in a in a seat of power. You sit in a in, in a seat of position. So here's what the, uh, uh, the text is saying: that if you walk long enough with ungodly people, you'll start doing what ungodly people are doing. And watch this: you'll stand in it long enough. That you would do it without any conscience. You, you, you won't even feel bad about it. You, you know why I know I'm saved? Because now at least I do feel bad about it. But at one time in my life, it didn't even bother me. Help me, somebody. I would do what I do, uh-huh, yeah, like you did, amen. And we'll go to sleep and wake up like it never happened. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Wrong places, wrong beds, wrong cars, wrong stuff, wrong. It, 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 why y'all looking at me like that? <laughs> look, look, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know what he's talking about. Yeah. But, but I know I'm saved because I, I, I don't do it as much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and I feel bad about it. And then if you ain't careful, not only would you start sitting, I mean standing around, then you'll sit. The word sit literally means that, that you're comfortable. You, 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 you done got so comfortable around ungodly people that it's going to end, it's going to cause you to lose your membership to the blessed tree. Okay, now, now, now I'm about finished, but let me say this, let me say this. This is important. It, it, this is very, very important to know how, the, how cursed uh, the ungodly people are. Because if I don't know how the ungodly people are, then, then I might find myself living an ungodly life. So, so Psalms 1, verse 1, 2, and 3 literally gives me two categories. Not just two trees, but two categories. Uh, the shall be... And the are not so. Now, now I, I need to find out, are you a part of the shall be or the are not so? Okay, now, now look, do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need to know which one do you fall under. Okay, now, now the reason why it's important is because uh, uh, he, the psalmist uses the word um, and, and when this, when I seen this, this is re this really blessed me. Scornful. The word scorn means to mark, to mock. Uh, um, uh, it, it means to mock somebody. Um, but scorn for, sc for scorn full means that you become a mocker. Mm, mm -hmm, mm. You, you ain't just mocking, but this is what you do. You mock all the time. And it don't bother you by being a mocker. Now, if this message isn't bothering your spirit now, maybe it's because you like hanging around people of debauchery nature. And if it don't bother you, maybe it's because you are. Mm. Okay. Uh, um, preachers, I'm done when I say this um, because... You need to know how you can be declared the are not so. 
your attitude will cause you to be in the are not so category. Because if blessed mean happiness and you always causing sadness, I'm sorry to suggest to you that you're probably a part of the are not so. Also, those of you who are part of the are not so, usually it's based, because, uh, based on who you give consistent ad attention to. For the text says that you should not listen or give ear to the ungodly people. See, you never, you'll never be happy if you hang around the ungodly. You, you, may, you, may, you may creep and you may do things that, that, that might yeah, uh, give you a little good time for a moment, but whatever is done in the dark will always come in the light, and God is not going to have you being a hypocrite in the house of the Lord. Now, it's because of these actions that's done that the uh, original tree comes into play because it is like I stated gave sin power now pastor you've said so much now about this original tree and this cursed tree and you told us somewhat something about this blessed tree well the blessed tree of course if uh, according to the text says that you will be prosperous in all your ways and everything you touch will be blessed and everything that you, you that you do you will be blessed and thank God that God will bless people that know how to bless him that know how to honor him that know his ways and know his statutes and and honor that now here's the shout the shout is I have not always been under this tree and here's the other shout if I ain't careful, I lose my membership to the tree. So every day I'm doing my best not to lose my membership. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there are some people that know how to push that button. That There are some people that surround me that know how to get on my last nerve. That, that There are some things that are going on in my life that will cause me to lose my membership. But I'm so glad if you do lose it, it's not too late. I'm done. Here's why. Because there is one other tree. That I just got to tell you about and I'm done. It is that tree that helps us to deal with the curse tree. It is that tree that helps us to deal with the original tree. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now, 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 let me tell you why that's important. Because I asked God, why a tree? Why? Why a tree? You know, it's an anthropomorphic term that God is using in order to give us a, 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 an idea of how our lives are as a tree. Watch this. He, uh, 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 every tree starts out as a seed. I'm done. Uh, uh, that seed has to be placed in the ground. In the ground, that seed dies. It's called germination. And once it dies, watch this, the roots starts to go downward. And anybody that know anything about horticulture will tell you that a tree branches up top looks like the roots at the bottom and a lot of times people like to look at your fruit but they don't know nothing about your root come here come here come here because this gonna help us stay under the right tree see there's a whole lot of people have a lot of leaves but don't have no fruit Jesus had a problem with, with trees like that because when he looked at the fig tree when he was hungry and it was in season and didn't have no fruit, the Bible says that Jesus cursed it. Preach for Butler, I'm trying. <laughs> Jesus got mad at the fruit, uh, fruit. Here's why. Because it had the position, but it didn't have the production. And a lot of you all are in the position to thrive and to grow fruit. But because of your nature and who you like to hang around and what you done got comfortable with, you're growing leaves, but you ain't got no fruit. Do, do, do I have a witness in the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so, so Jesus teaches that. The, the prerogative of the planter is to make sure that when he put that seed you in the ground, that you not only grow up, but you grow down. 
And here's the problem with growing down. Growing down got to deal with damp, dark, and dirty. And it's hard to grow up when you're dealing with damp, dark, and dirty down. And there's a whole lot of people lose. And then uh, 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 the, the one other time Jesus went and, and, and told the disciples about how the gardener uh, 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 planted some fig trees and it didn't, no figs grew. And the Bible says that the gardener gave it another year. And when, when that year came for production, which I thank God, because that's all Jesus is saying, is that even if you ain't producing, God will give you another year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, 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 some, the devil wants to extinguish you when God wants to extend you. Right. It, do, do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God will give you another chance. Yeah, God, God will let you get it right. He'll let you get it. How? Because of the other tree. That he, he brings into our view and focus. Well, Reverend, what is this other tree that you're so intrigued about? Well, it's found in Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 13, where it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is anyone and everyone that hangeth on a tree. But because Christ came and hung on a tree, he lifted the curse off of every last one of us. Well, 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 how does that play a role in this message tonight? Here it is, and I'm done. Because of that first tree, God took his hands off us. But because of the second tree, God put his hands back on us because of the first tree. I was wilding in my sins, but because of the second tree, yeah, I've been saved from my sins. Because of the first tree, I was blind and I could not see. But because of the second tree, I got my sight back and I can see that God is good. Well, if you don't mind, look at your name and say, name, I got my sight back. I can see God being good. I can see God being great. Do you hear me? Because of the first stream, I was headed to hell. But because of the second stream, heaven is my home. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Do me a favor, look at your name and say, Name, that first stream messed me up. But that second stream straightened me up. Come here, convention. Thank God for that second stream. See, the first stream was in a garden that got me in trouble. But I thank God that second stream, it wasn't in a garden. It was on a hill called Calvary where they hung them high and they stretched them wide. How many of y'all know he died? High five your neighbor and said, no. I thank God that he sure enough died but early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand and that's the tree that I'm thankful God for if it wasn't for that tree I don't know where I don't know when and I don't know how I would have made it Put your arms around your neighbor and say, neighbor, never would have made it if it wasn't for Jesus. Come on, I just need somebody to find three people and say, thank God for Jesus. Come on, tell them, thank God for Jesus. One more time, thank God for Jesus. 
I said, thank God. I said, thank God. Yeah. Goodbye convention. Long fare you well. But I'm so glad that the planter said, I'm planting you by the rivers of water. Do you hear me? It's the Euphrates River that have tributaries and rivers connected. In other words, it'll never run out of water. Put your arms around your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got good news for you. The God I serve sure will. He'll never run out. He got so much love. He got so much power. Whatever you need, God got it. He got it all in his hand. And he alright. Tell your neighbor, I'm planted by the rivers of water. And whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever I do shall prosper. Well, do me one last favor, and I promise I'm done. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever you do is going to work because you under the right tree now. Whatever didn't work then, it sure will. Sure will. Can I say it like I want it? Sure will. It'll work out. Won't it do it? Won't it make a way? Won't God do it? Say yeah. Say yeah. I said thank you. I said thank you. I said thank you. When you plan it right, when you're under the right tree, all things are possible to them that believe. Now I don't know who you buy, but one more time, look right at your neighbor and point right at him and say, neighbor, Ears have not heard what my God shall will do. Shall will do. Shall will do for you. Any all right? Let me hear you say it. I'm trying to let it go, but wouldn't have religion. I couldn't feel sometimes wouldn't have religion. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Don't, don't, don't walk. Listen, listen. As we end every late night with prayer, as you go back to your room or wherever you go back to tonight, I promise you, you're going to remember 
the original tree and this good tree. Can we give God praise for Pastor Keith Butler? My brother. Let's look to God before we go tonight. God, we thank you for such an awesome and powerful word. Heavenly Father, we first of all, we pause to tell you thank you for salvation. Thank you for giving your son Jesus to die for us at Calvary. But now, God, as we leave this place tonight, help us not to focus on the bad tree, but help us to look to the tree that's good for the healing of the nation. God, we thank you tonight that you didn't forget about us, but you sent your son Jesus to die for us that we might have eternal life. Now, God, as we leave this place, keep on giving us these constant reminders of how good you've been to us. And now, God, as we leave tonight, and we lay down and slumber and we sleep, let us sleep knowing that our salvation is signed, sealed, and delivered. Now, God, thank you for this preacher. Replenish him with everything that he gave out. And touch this congregation to let us know that we, there is a reality in a true and living God. To those who have traveled, give them traveling grace and mercy as they go back to their various destinations. And Lord God, if you do this for us, we will be so ever careful to give your name the praise the honor and the glory. It's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise tonight. Amen. As we leave, get prepared to leave, let me thank God for once again the Mount Olive family. Amen. Thank you all so much. I love y'all so much. And, um, we, uh, to this convention, we are getting married officially on this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Amen, amen. And so we thank all of you, those who are watching online. God bless you. I see you. God bless you. Thank you so much. You may consider yourselves dismissed. I, I, I heard the uh